Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for being uh, joining us today for our Civil 3D for Surveyors and Engineers webinar. Uh, before we jump in, I wanted you to know that the webinar is recorded. And uh, also, we have the Q&A chat uh, box, so you can write your questions there. We will be able to answer those questions as we go along, or most importantly, at the end, depending on the kind of question. Uh, all attendee lines are going to be muted so that we don't hear any noise. And um, if you have any questions, you always can call us, or if you cannot hear us, or if you have any questions during the webinar or at the end of the webinar, you can always call us at the number on the screen or email us at infoddscat.com. It is our pleasure to have today with us our infrastructure trainer, consultant, implementation specialist, and much more, Seth Cohen. So Seth, take it away. Can you guys hear me now, Raquel? I believe that we can. Uh, if you guys uh, don't hear, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, as Raquel stated, please, you know, during the uh, webinar at any time, just feel free to type in the chat panel. Uh, so our agenda for today, um, as uh, the title implies, we're going to talk about survey data uh, as it relates to our survey, you know, getting survey into Civil 3D. Uh, so we'll discuss the Civil 3D interface. Um, as it relates to survey data, so there's a little bit of an assumption that you have a little basic understanding of Civil 3D, but if you do not, just let us know uh, in the chat panel. We can answer any questions after the uh, after the webinar is done. Uh, we'll talk about the setup that is required to automate your survey uh, import process and to automate the CAD standards, to automate the graphics as it relates to obviously uh, the data within within CAD. We'll also kind of touch on how to collect field data. Um, and some of the efficiencies that Civil 3D provides so that you can actually automate your field work or you know, your, your, collect, your collection of data in the field um, a lot more easily. And then we'll, we'll, we'll dive right into the survey database, which is the interface to uh, get the survey data into uh, your drawing. And we'll, we'll talk about the interaction between the survey database and the drawing as well. And then we'll talk about plotting your topo drawing, kind of getting the final deliverables that you would normally have, whether you're delivering your data to a, an engineer, whether you're using the data because uh, you're a surveyor who works for an engineering firm and you're going to create surface from it or you're going to actually plot it, um, you know, as a topo drawing. All right, so let's just go ahead and just dive right into um, Civil 3D. All right, and, and so, and again, if, if at time, uh, please feel free to just type in the chat panel if there's something that I discussed and just kind of fly over and it's, it's something that you're interested in, um, you know, just, just, just let us know. I don't know if you guys, on the background, just, I can hear some background noise. I'm not sure if someone needs to be muted, uh, Raquel or, or Sandra. All right, so uh, the whole goal of showing you guys the, the survey data is, to, or the survey process, is to show you the automation that it can provide, okay? So, so as you can see here in this drawing, Basically, what I have is a completed uh, kind of project that you would, you know, that you would see. Um, you can see this line work here. You can see the points. You can see this little, um, you know, curb here that we have as well. And you can see where it's this edge of wetland. So all this data here was completed automatically. I didn't have to do any kind of edits afterwards. Um, you know, is that a perfect world? Not necessarily, but there is a way to pretty much automate almost every aspect of the survey functionality within Civil 3D. Uh, with a little bit of work and with a, a, a bunch of setup in Civil 3D, you can automate all of this functionality so that you don't have to be entering uh, or connecting the dots to draw line work. I still see that to this day. Many surveyors, in fact, I just did a, a tech support call for a surveyor and I was asking him what he was doing for work and he's literally picking points on the screen, connecting the dots for a four mile project. And I, I just said to him that you can completely automate that. I don't, you know, it's a, it's a complete waste of, you can imagine the hours as, you, as I'm sure you guys have done that it takes to do that. Okay, so this can be completely automated. So let's just talk about the interface first. Let's just kind of have a, a just a brief discussion on that, okay? So as far as the, the interface to, to Civil 3 uh, as, as it relates to survey, you see here we have this, this survey tab. All right, the survey tab is kind of the one-stop shop for just dealing with survey kind of information. That's, the, that's what the survey tab does. If it's not open, you'll see right here in the ribbon under the home tab is basically a, a button here that will toggle and off. Again, this is in the tool space, all right? Now, of course, as with in Civil 3D, um, you're going to actually have to kind of deal with 
uh, settings and styles. That, that's just the nature of Civil 3D, uh, and, and it, it obviously automates pretty much every other process that you would normally have to do within your, your CAD drawings manually. So that's the whole purpose of setting this up here. So let's have a look at the setup that you have to have to do before Civil 3D. Um, the, again, as it relates to surveying, there's only a few categories within the settings tab that you really have to be concerned with. So it's not the entire gamut, because you know, you're know you not gonna be doing pipe networks, you're not gonna be doing um, pressure stuff. You may locate them for existing and stuff like that, but that's that's a that's a completely different process, okay? So what I wanna look at is um, the drawing settings itself, okay? So if I right click on the drawing settings here and go to the edit drawing setting uh, category, you'll see that you actually, uh, you in here. So again, if you're familiar with Civil 3D, um, you normally would have writing the drawing template, and that's basically what I what you would do here. So I don't happen to have a coordinate system, but you know you can of course type in here. So if I want to do FL83 dash EF, I could associate that coordinate system to the drawing. And of course, if you do this in your drawing template, the second you start up a drawing within your company, it would automatically have it. So you don't even have to worry about setting the coordinate system up in here. The other thing. Uh, nothing spectacular here, but it's just worth noting. You go to the object layers tab here. There are a few settings in here, not not that many, that do deal with the survey, whether it's survey figures, survey figure labeling, um, as well as uh, uh, you know, kind of dealing with uh, survey and stuff like that. But that's pretty much it as far as the survey goes, as far as dealing with it within the object layers tab here. Okay. So the guts of basically what kind of do for civil 3D setup is going to be under the glory, um, as well as some additional categories here. But for, for, for the points themselves, if you go to the points uh, category right here, you'll see that you have a bunch of point styles, label, or a bunch of categories, label styles, uh, point style formats, et etc. Okay. So let's just touch on the first one here, which is point styles. So the point style category is basically anything that you need to to an actual symbol as you'd want to see it in the drawing, you would create a point style. There are many uh, surveyors that I have set up or, or have seen set up their own template. They, they've done their own templates and they've actually set up a point style for every single code that they actually, uh, that, that they use in their, in their company. And that's unnecessary. Um, basically the only point styles you need to create are the ones that you're gonna actually show on the screen or that you're gonna actually plot or you wanna see something. Uh, for instance, like a natural ground shot or just a random ground shot, you would not need to create a point style for that because it's just, oh, you're not, you're not going to plot that. If you're reducing your data or you want to see where the points are, you do want to see the point. But as you can see here in the drawing, I have a simple X as a, that displays for that actual point. And that's all you would need. So if you look on the bottom here, on my, um, uh, my point style category, I have one called X mark. So this is basically the, the point that it's a, it's a generic point style that I would use for all the other points that don't require a symbol. Okay. Now, as far as setting these up, it's fairly straightforward. You know, uh, you know, Autodesk has, has designed it. Is all you do is you create it. You know, you can right click on here, you create new. We'll just look at an existing one here. And if I look here, basically the first again, this is following my standards as a company. So these blocks already in here. And as you can see here, it's using the one called fire hydrant. I can define a scale for that fire hydrant. If I want this fire hydrant to actually scale with the drawing scale, if you basically plot in a one equals 100 viewport or one equals 50 viewport, you, this would scale with the, with, the, with the viewport automatically. So you would just set the you would say use drawing scale. If you do not want that to scale and you want it to stay the same size no matter what, you would just say either use fixed scale or use size in absolute units. Again, it's completely up to your standard. And then the display tab is basically designed to tell you, or to tell Civil 3D, when I have a, uh, a, a point in the field that I actually locate and it's called, it maps to this point style, what I want that point to be, do I want it to be displayed, as well as what layer do I want it to be on. Now you're gonna notice here, every single one of my point styles is actually defined to layer zero. And if, you don't, if you're not familiar with this functionality, you're probably saying, well, why would you ever do that? Don't you want it to be on a specific layer? And the answer is no. Uh, you can, um, but I recommend that you actually do it to, you, you, you have the layer um, standards defined by what's called the description key, which we'll talk about in a second, okay? So that's kind of the first step. You create a point style for all the points that you would ever want to plot on a, on, a, on, a, on a set of plans, and then you have that generic one called X mark, okay? So again, you know, this for this 
company, there are hundreds of description keys. The, if I were to count these point spells, there's only 38. So there are only 30 that would require a block, basically, to be mapped to the specific point code that you're going to actually locate out in the field. Okay? So that's the first step. First step is to define if you want to um, enable, you know, to, to display automatically. Right? Uh, you could do label styles next, but this order, the order of this does not actually matter. So whatever labels you're going to need, you, you will, will display those in a second here as far as, you know, do you want to see just the description? Do you want to see elevation and description? Do you want to see the point number northern and easting? Um, and so on and so forth. So you can create some default label styles um, that actually, you know, show up or that are wrong as you're kind of going through the survey workflow, right? The next step is to um, go over what's called uh, a description key set or create a description key set. And this is a little bit time consuming. And of course, if you need any help with standard development, we are more than happy to do that for you guys or, or help you guys with it. Um, it's, it's something that we do. All right, so basically, of course, as with any kind of interest, the settings tab, you just click. Okay, so if I was to create a new one, I would simply create a brand new one here. Okay, um, just so you know, you can have multiple description keys, and basically the order obviously does matter, so the, the top one wins. So if you wanted to, I don't recommend you do this, but you can actually have multiple in the same drawing. I recommend that you would basically have a separate drawing template for a separate set of you know standards. If let's say you're following DOT, or let's say you're following another client that that requires different cells or whatever. Okay. Uh, but let's just look at this one here that I have called XYZ Survey. Uh, I'll go ahead and right-click on it and go to Edit Keys. And this will open up my description key set in the panorama window. All right, so in the panorama, which is kind of the one-stop shop for anything kind of tabular within Civil 3D, where you create your uh, – basically, it's a very simple, straightforward thing. What you're doing is creating whatever your codes are, you want to have a code in the description that ma or, or description key that matches – the code that you guys will have in the field, in the data collector, okay? So to create them, again, as any interaction as you do in Civil 3D, you right click. So I just right click on here, I can, I can create new, delete, et cetera, okay? So let's look at what actually is involved in the description key. Just so you know, these, all these columns are sortable, which is really great, that makes it a lot kind of easy to work with, okay? Um, but let's just take a look at, um, let's look at a tree one. Actually, let's look at a basic one, just a, just like a, a natural ground or whatever, okay? So I look up here and I scroll down to, um, I think here I called it side shot, or just shot here. That's right, she's shoulder here. Um, so, I, so let's look at the top of curve here, okay? So top of curve does not require a point that, all right? So if you look here, it's saying what style you want to use. So of course, it's saying X, I don't really care about the style. I'm not going to plot that. I can lock in the label style if I want to, or I can actually have a setting here. I'll go ahead and click this. And you can have this setting here called default. Same thing applies to the style. Let me hit escape here real quickly. And we'll go ahead and do that right here as well. So here are all those point styles that we created, but there's this one here, there's this category default. And I'll explain what that one does um, in a second here, okay? So you can map them here. If you look at here, there's also this format column. So I can basically tell Civil 3D when you a code, see, I want you to display the call space of curve. There's also parameters and settings that can actually basically display whatever you want it to display. So if you look at the next one here called toe, this one has a parameter called dollar sign asterisk. And basically what that means is it'll take this name called toe, and when it plots it in the drawing, it'll put the word, and if in the description of the point file, there was some additional information and that you added inside the data collector, it'll actually grab that information as well and append it to the actual name of the code. But there's also some additional really cool things that you can do with these parameters. Okay, so if we look at the tree one here, I've got one here called tree C, tree D, tree coniferous, tree deciduous, okay? You'll see it's mapping it to a, a, different, like a different block for that type of tree, okay? Then you map the style. But you can also use these other parameters. And there's a parameter here. You notice here it says dollar sign one inch mark, and then it's spelled in the first tree. So what does that do? Well, basically, out in the field, you would probably have located, when you locate the tree, you'd say 36-inch uh, tree, 40-inch tree, two-foot tree, or whatever, however you locate them per your standard. So if you look at the description of the, if we were to look at it in the, in the actual uh, uh, the, the uh, text file, you would see it would say 
uh, chip space, and then it would have the 34, 42, or 12. And basically what Civil 3D knows to do is that is what's called parameter number one. And as you can see here in my drawing, it's actually grabbing that and creating what I guess you would dynamic label in that it's reading the text file and whatever's in the text file, it'll ultimately put that in there. Um, you can even have it the block as well if you really wanted it to, okay? So that's another option as well that's available in the description uh, key set here, uh, which is fine here. If you look at the, the, the scale parameter, so it's saying use parameter number one. As you can see here, I can have as many, I think up to nine, yeah. You can have nine parameters that you define that would be able to, to, to define that, okay? Um, and so again, you can use this functionality throughout any kind of, uh, throughout any kind of, uh, 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 oh. So if you look here, I've got a utility pole. Utility pole and then dollar sign one. So whatever is defined in the description out in the field, it'll actually append that to the utility pole. Again, so it automates that, that label, all right? So again, this process here most definitely will take you a little bit of time if you've never set this up. And as you can see here, this list is very extensive. But the majority of these codes are going to use the X mark. Again, I only have 38 points basically mapped to symbol. But this is how the mapping kind of works. Now, if you remember, I mentioned all the point styles basically have their label as well as the actual marker itself set to layer zero. The reason I do that is if you look here, I use the description key to map to the correct layer. So that the, doing this, doing it this way is it gives me the ability to actually use AutoCAD commands because you know the majority of us are all CAD users who have 3D. So I would go in here, you know, I don't want to see these points, I just want to see the tree points. It's a regular layer freeze command. And notice how it's not freezing any of the other points. This one here is a, it, it's on its own layer, right? If I look over here, the tree is on its own. So I can click on that one there and notice how now it's not freezing all those. So it, it enables you to basically categorize your points and allows you to kind of use CAD tools to freeze them. If I didn't do it this way, uh, where I don't use the description key, then the, I would have to manually go to the layer drop down here, figure out what layer those points would be on and manually freeze them, which is not a very efficient workflow, right? We all like to kind of use the layer freeze command to quickly freeze, freeze points. So it's very important, I cannot stress this enough, use the layer or the layer drop of the layer um, category to define what your codes should go on, okay? And of course it can be, it can be duplicate, right? So if you look here, you know, point, uh, you know, uh, I can sort by this here. Um, building, I have three or four different codes for building, but as, as you can see here, you know, it's it's basically using the same layer because they're all building. Okay, so you can obviously have, you know, it, it depends on how your standards are set up. Okay, but that's basically what you want to do is, and you define the code. Um, one other thing to point out about the code, uh, if you look here, some of these codes have an asterisk, like CYP asterisk, or the tree one will have that same exact um, asterisks in there as well. Basically, the asterisk on the code, code column, it says, hey, when I see a code with tree C, make sure you, you pass into Civil 3D the rest of the description so I can use it for something else or put it in the description itself. And the reason we do that for these is if you look here, remember, we're, we're leveraging that dollar sign one functionality. And the reason that we do that is it passes in whatever the size of the tree is, or in the case of the utility poles, the additional information for utility poles. So by ha you have to have the asterisk for it to be passed into Civil 3D. So just kind of be aware of that as well, okay? Okay, so that is the description key. Again, this is the, one of the most crucial parts of the uh, points in, you know, to, to automate that into, into Civil 3D, okay? All right, so the next thing, is um, figure prefix database, all right? Actually, let me back up. I'm not, we'll go over that in a second. But the next thing is actually, scroll, if you scroll down here in the settings tab, let's just kind of stick with Civil 3D to the drawing, is if we scroll down, you will notice that there is um, additional category called survey here, okay? Um, if you do conventional survey, there's, a, there's something called network and network styles. That'll basically show you your entire network, basically where you set up, where you back site, any directions or azimuths that you locate and then any, any side shots. So it'll actually show you the true kind of network of your, of your survey. Uh, the majority of companies nowadays are kind of doing uh, GPS, so um, you probably will not use that. But if you are using conventional 
or doing conventional survey and you want to see your network, make sure you set your network style up, okay? But the other section here that's crucial for this to automate um, into Civil 3D is what's called figure styles. Your figures are your line work. So this here, this, this edge of pavement that you see right here in the drawing is actually a survey figure. Notice how it has a name, it has a style, and it's going on a layer. Whereas this one here is going on, as you can imagine, and it's going on its own unique layer, okay? And so basically, the same kind of functionality um, is, is done here as you would do with the description. This is for figures or line work, okay? Now, many companies are different um, as far as how you set this up. You can set this up where you have uh, one figure style uh, for each type of line work that you would do. So if you look here, this is <clears throat> BC for bottom of the curb. Um, I also have one here for center line. So this center line here is locking into a layer. Again, there are there are multiple ways to do this. Okay, and I'm kind of on the on the fence. I've I've seen it kind of. Or you could use it, you could do it both ways. In theory, right? What I've actually been able to I've, I've actually done this for some companies is you actually could set up your company so that you literally don't have all the figure styles that you see here. You actually just have one figure style, and actually I'll, I'll kind of create one here, so you can see that, that, I'll just say new, and I'll call this one figure style. Pretty straightforward. And in the display tab, what you would then do is you would tell Civil 3D, well, for this type of style, what, do, what kind of uh, uh, parts of the figure do I want to display? The figure line work, the vertex markers, midpoints, endpoints, or additional ones, basically from the additional points that you might locate, okay? Um, in this case, I probably only want the figure line because <clears throat> this is I want to automate the line work. So I would just just have figure lines on, and what I would leave it on is I would set this to uh, just layer zero, okay? And I'm going to set this to block, and I would leave the other line, everything else, to by block as well. So in reality, okay, um, this drawing is is an, a company that I set up, so they they wanted to have it set up a different way. But in reality, you could literally just define one figure style, and I'm going to show you how you automate this in a second. So that it literally, it'll use one style, but the figure prefix database will drive all the components or all the figures layers that it should go on. And you can still use that same functionality we talked about, which is layer freeze and, and so on and so forth. Okay. All right. So where is that done? All right. So if we just kind of minus that in the survey tab here, all right, we have uh, a category here called, a category here called figure prefix database. Now, you'll see here I have a whole bunch defined. Some, uh, if, you, if you use the, the DOT state kit, the FDOT one will, will be there for you. When they install the DOT state kit, it, it provides it for you automatically. So if you're following the DOT codes, basically you have this already available to you. You can just use them. You can just leverage it, okay? Obviously, you'd have to make sure that you're in a DOT drawing template so that when you access the survey functionality and you basically put the data into your drawing, you actually have the... Um, uh, the actual layers that you would actually want to map to the uh, uh, the actual the actual line work itself. Okay, so that that way you actually you know can, can you can do the, you can use the, the state kit. Um, you'll see here I've got some other ones here. Some you know, but by default if you don't have a state kit you'll have sample. All right, I've created my own here. All right, um, called Company XYZ. All right, and uh, let's go ahead and right click on here. And, and again the same exact thing you do as you did before. Just right click on the figure prefix database and say new. Okay. So I'll right click on this and go to manage uh, prefix, prefix, prefix database. Now I will say this with the survey, it, it's a little slow um, as far as like if I scroll down and kind of work with this. On, I've actually reported to Autodesk, but um, you know, they just kind of, it, it, it's a new interface. I think three versions ago they added it and it just kind of, it's a little bit kind of slow. So just, just be aware of that um, as you're kind of working through here, okay? So this is a pretty straightforward thing. So this, this, is, this is literally, the equivalent, equivalent of the description key. And the reason it's the equivalent is all you have to do, except actually, I, I, let me back up here. It's, it's actually not, with the description key, you have to add every single uh, description that you would ever have, right? Because you want to map even the X marks. This one's actually uh, a little bit simpler in that you don't have to have every single code um, in here. All you have to have is the code that you will map line work to, okay? That is all you have to do. So basically, the only ones that will actually create it, will generate a line 
or, or, or ones that you wanted during line, you actually have to put it in. So as you can see here, my list here is a lot smaller. It's still extensive enough, but it's lots of the description key. All it has is codes that actually will map to a line type. So let's kind of look through the columns here. So if you remember correctly, I was kind of, you know, uh, well, first off, let, let, let's just go in order here. So break line, um, does this figure or will this figure be required to go into a surface, right? Because the eventual goal is to not only have a topo map or a topo drawing, you also want to have a um, surface that you can, you know, well, not always necessarily, but uh, you want to have a surface typically to give to the engineers or, you know, to kind of use for, uh, to show contours and so on. So will this type of figure require it to be a break line? Some may and some might not, like this gas line here. I want to automate the gas line, fun, you know, to show, show the gas line, but I don't need it to be a figure, you, especially if it's obviously below ground. You don't want that to be a surface. So that's why it's set to no. Same thing with the fence line. A fence line shouldn't necessarily go into a surface. So, you know, this one here is slow line, and that one should be. Uh, you can also automate it if you want it to go into an actual site, do kind of parcels, okay? So this one here is like a boundary line. Say, yes, I want this to be a boundary. And then if you look here, I can actually tell it what site I, I want to go into. Now, the kind of the nice thing, but the thing to just be aware of is you can actually type in these fields. You see, the figure prefix database is not stored in the drawing. It's actually stored externally. Okay, I'm going to show you where it's stored in a second here, but it's stored externally. So I could actually type in, um, you know, parcels, all right? And then basically, it, if it's in your drawing template, it'll actually create that site for you, all right? Uh, backing up here to the rest of the columns here. So if you look here, remember I mentioned to you that you could literally have one figure style for all of your figures. Because basically, if you look here, this layer can control what layer the figure will go on, and then the style is almost irrelevant. I don't have to even worry about the style, but in this case, because of the way that this company wanted it set up, they also want the style to, to be controlled with it as well, okay? They, they might, they want to show, just have the ability to, to, to do that, okay? So if I was doing where the layer controls it, my style, the only style you would see defined in this column would be that style called figure style. Okay, that, that would be basically it, okay? So, just kind of, just revisiting what we saw, talked about. Point styles, description key set, and then figure prefix database. Okay, those are the kind of the three things we've talked about. And those are pretty much the three things that, that all you kind of really need to define for this, the, the automation of the survey functionality, okay? All right, so let's talk about some of the addition settings here in the survey tab, okay? So, in the survey tab here, if I kind of look over here, there are some a default survey user settings that you want to be aware of here, right? This is where your default location for things is defined. So as I mentioned, the figure defaults, well, it's located right over here. So I kind of click on this little browse button, and let me just kind of open this up here in Windows Explorer. You will see here are all my figure prefix databases that I have defined in here. This is why it's finding it. If you look at the path, it's going to C colon, program data, Autodesk 2019, blah, 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 et cetera, okay? So it is going to this, you know, local setting, but if you wanted to, as a company, you can actually define it to go to your server. That way, no one's gonna accidentally pick the, the local versions of your figure prefixes. Um, you can actually just put in the server, and then you can actually, um, you know, use it, you can just point to it in here. Now, uh, just for them, you know, if once you set this up yourself, what you can actually do is you can actually um, uh, export these settings to a file, and then you can put over, so it's a .usr underscore set file, all right? And once that's kind of on the server, you can then just, of course, the button next to it, which is right over here, right? That button here will actually then import it, okay? So there's a whole bunch of settings here which, which Autodesk, you know, you know filter the automates, okay? So as you can see, I'm not gonna go over all of them, but there's a lot of settings here that you kind of, you know, use or leverage so that you can survey functionality within your company, okay? All right, um, <clears throat> so once all that's set up and ready, and I'm not gonna say it's gonna take a half hour, which you've done so far, then you're kind of ready to kind of work with the survey data, all right? And the way that you work with survey data is you work with the survey data. Now, um, I already, you know, this, this drawing here is completed, um, but let me go ahead and I'm gonna start from scratch because I don't want you guys thinking that I've got anything up my sleeve here. I'll actually do a layer previous, and, and we'll just make sure I have all my layers turned on. 
and I'm gonna do a control, all right? I'm gonna select everything in the drawing, and I'm gonna hit delete on the keyboard, all right? Um, that way, nothing's in the drawing, and I've got nothing, you know, to, to kind of uh, uh, show you that that's something, right? Uh, of course, just to kind of reiterate this, obviously, you're gonna need your AutoCAD layers too, right? It's not just about Civil 3D. So all, you're gonna have all the, the standard AutoCAD layers that you would normally have for your survey, whether it's topo, you know, uh, topo information or it's uh, uh, survey information or it's uh, et cetera. And of course, you're gonna have your blocks, right? Um, so here, of course, I have all the blocks that I would ever need, you know, for my type of information. And of course, those blocks would be pointed to by the point styles, right? That's basically how it kind of works. All right, so the first thing you would do is you what you do what's called you set your working folder. All right, just like on the if you ever use the the, the the civil side of things in the prospector tab, you do the same exact thing for like data shortcuts. Well, with the survey, um, what they what Autodesk wanted to do was they wanted to allow the surveyor to have their own control completely because civil 3D data. You're probably aware of this. If you're not, this is how it works: is it's stored in the DWG file, which basically means if you actually go ahead and delete stuff in the drawing, it's gone forever, unless you, and then you have to go kind of get the backup. Well, when it comes to survey data, you know, a surveyor does not want their engineers going into the drawing and deleting the data, and then they lose everything. So what part of the solution to that was to basically make what's called a survey database, and then you can define where that survey database is located. It can be on the server at your company, wherever you want it to be, and then you obviously, as an IT, you know, you have your IT kind of set permissions so that the engineers in your company cannot access the actual data. Now, if you send your data out to an engineering firm, you're not gonna send them the survey database. You're gonna just send them the data within the drawing like a completed file. So they'll have the points, they are, or they may not even have the points. You can actually just give them the surface. If you wanna just give them a Linux ML surface, you say, hey, here's your surface. You don't get my points because I don't want you messing with the points thing I bet you, know, you actually have the ability to edit them. You can also bring the survey points into the drawing and it locks them as well. We'll, we'll kind of go over that as well, all right? So again, that's the whole purpose of this kind of segregated functionality is that Autodesk wanted to give the surveyor complete control of their data so that way no other way, no one else can touch it. And you can, of course, set your own permissions so that you know, they, they can't do it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and set my working folder. And as you can see here, I can define where I want it to be. So I've got this, this, this folder here that's already done. Um, and, as you, and as you can see here, I already have one called completed, all right? But basically what I'm gonna do is I'll just leave it here where it is, uh, but you would of course just define that at your server location, all right? Um, and just to, let me just kind of open this up here so that you can see where this is going here. So here is where that location is. Again, there's always tells to people, everyone thinks kind of there's like this, when, it, when stuff happens with Autodesk software or CAD or whatever, there's like this magical stuff that happens. It's, I mean, it's pretty magical what happens because it's nicely automated, but it's, there's always, you know, it's basically just creating data for you and it's just, these are the locations where you define it. So there's always a setting somewhere that this is being done. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click on this and say new local survey database, this one webinar, and just press enter. And all of that does is literally, it just created a folder called webinar and here's your survey data, okay? Now, prior to version, I think it was 2016, which I thought was pretty cool, but there must have been security reasons why they did this. The survey database was actually an access database. You could actually open it up in access and kind of do some you know, edits there, and, and if you knew how to do database functionality, it was actually pretty cool. That said, it is no longer a survey, it's not, a, it's not an access database. It's its own unique format, um, probably for security reasons, which is why they did that, okay? All right, so I'm now in the survey database, and now I want to bring in data, okay? So again, uh, you know, you would, you would basically use um, whatever functionality, uh, you know, you have, whether it's Trimble, Leica, et cetera, to kind of, you know, reduce, uh, bring it in. Survey, uh, Civil 3D does have full-blown, you know, least squares analysis tools, compass rule type tools. I'm not going to go over all those. Um, but basically, you can do that if you want to, but most companies don't use Civil 3D for that. They usually use... Um, the actual survey kind of uh, functionality or survey software to kind of reduce their data or to kind of get it into the correct coordinate systems and that kind of stuff. So once you're kind of getting into Stable 3D, you're basically just kind of ready to either just bring it all in, automate it to kind of generate the line work, to generate your, your, your CAD files and so on and so forth, okay? All right, so just to kind of show you that, um, I've got some text files and I already have some, um, 
data already created, all right? And so in here, I've got these text files that I want to kind of go over here, okay? So actually, let me, let me back up. Let me do that. I did, I did want to talk about something else. I, I kind of skipped over and I forgot about that. So I want, I want to talk about collecting field data. So in the field, all right, you don't have to go, you know, in the old days, it, it was actually what we used to do, because I've surveyed for a couple of years back in the 90s. And what we used to do to, to, to automate our line work, we would basically locate all of top back of curb in one side of the road, then come back and do the bottom of curb, then come back and do the center line, then come back and do the opposite side. And that was how we automated our line work because it was just easier when we got back in the office. Most companies, of course, want to do cross sections, right? You want to locate, you know, the, the, go, go down the road, do the ditch every 50 feet. I'm not, it could be every 100 feet, every 500 feet, whatever, whatever you, you've done for your quote for the, for the engineer or for your company, okay? And so you can do that. But the, the key thing to remember, this is all you have to kind of do if you're not familiar with this, is basically if you have multiple, um, if you have multiple line work that's going to have load. So here I've got this, this text file, and this text file does basically have, um, you know, all the code, the, the, the line work kind of, or the, not line, but the, the points reduced. But if you're locating line work, just give it a unique name. You can still do cross sections of the road, but basically when you come back to it, just give it EP2, EP1, center line one, center line two, if you're doing side roads, ditch line one, ditch line two, tow one, tow two, et cetera. That's all you have to do in the field. And then Civil 3D, when you get back to the office, it'll automate it for you automatically. And it does not matter the order in which you do things. You can have them done, you can do it, you can do it sequentially, or you can do it basically in the order that you process the actual um, line work, or the, or, or the way that it exists in the text file. So that's the key thing. Just give it a unique name there. There's also some additional things here that you can automate as well, all right? Um, let me open up this other text file here. And I'm going to show it to you in a second here when I bring it in. All right, so I'm going to open up this one here called um, Curving. I should open up one called Template, sorry. So Civil 3D has this functionality where you can literally locate, let's say, the bottom of curve, okay? And let's say your job has, you know, and it's a consistent template where you're going, you have bottom of curb, top of curb, top back of curb, then you have a sidewalk, and so on, all right? And let's say, so that's your automated part, because obviously, you know, you, you assume that the, the road is, is built or, or, you know, built or constructed properly. And so Civil 3D has this templating functionality where you can do horizontal and vertical offsets from one point. So as you can see, I've got one, two, three, four, five points located, okay? But in the end, I'm going to actually have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven actual figures, okay? I'm going to have seven figures that will automatically be created for me, okay? Let me actually, let me actually show that function out. Let me, let me do survey database here, and I'll call this one in work, all right? So you can see this functionality, all right? So I'm, I have a brand new survey database. And basically, the way you interact with the survey database, just like anything else, is you right-click in it, all right? And the first step that you do is you create what's called an import event. So I'm going to go ahead and right-click on import event and import survey data. What's really nice about this functionality is you can create a new survey database right here. Uh, I re I'm obviously already in the one that I want to be in. I'll click next. It's like a wizard. And what's my points file format? So in this case, I have a PNEZD, which is already clicked right there. I'm going to go ahead and click on the plus sign here to add the file that I want to select. Now. Is I can select multiple files here. So I'm going to pick these three files building.txt, curving.txt, and templating.txt. So I can do all three, and it'll create three separate import events for me, which is really good. Open. Initially, it says, hey, I can't figure this out. And then once it's all done, it says, up, it won't file format. I'll go ahead and click next. I don't need a network because I don't have a network. These are GPS points. So we'll click next again. Right over here is where you define some, all the different parts of the things that we define over here in the survey user setting. This is where we define this already. So it's, it's there by default, but you can, of course, set them up. So here's my current figure prefix database, right? That's the one that I've created because I want to map it to the right one. Uh, and, of course, if you have different ones, you can, you can click the drop down here to map it to the different ones, okay? So I want to process line work during import. Of course I do. What's my line work code set? So we'll talk about the line work code set in a second here, but I have the sample one. What's my sequence? Do I want to do it by point number or the order that's in the file? So even if you don't have the a sequential set of points, you can do by import order. And of course, if you're doing cross sections of the road, 
all those points are going to be different, you know, later on numbers, basically. Okay, so you can do it that way as well, which is really nice. All right, uh, do I want to sign an offset? I'm, I'm not going to do that. Insert figures, insert survey points. Yes, I do. We'll go ahead and click on finish here. And what you'll see is automatically, I now have a bunch of kind of line work in there. And all these points are automatically there as well. Okay, so let's kind of look at, let's look back up here for what's called the line work code set. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and double click this. And basically, the line work code set, what it does is it enables you to put these additional codes. And of course, these codes will not match any description key. That is key. So I'm not going to have a description key called B because B is for begin, or one called C for continue, or E for end. If you want to know what all these do, I obviously we don't have time within this webinar to go over it, but just click the help file and it will show you what each one of these does. It's a pretty good help file. Okay? But as you can see here, I've got things called like begin curve, end curve, point on curve. So that's OC. And you can edit these. You know, if I, if I were to right click edit this, I would be able to edit it. Okay? So these codes will help you because in the actual codes, if you look here, all right, so let's look at this first example here. This one here is called curve one. It's just a, it's just a, 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 a figure. And if you look here, I actually have a description. So I did not locate the PC and the PT and the I just basically said, hey, this point here is on a curve. It automatically generated a curve for me. That's pretty cool. Now, if, of course, if I wanted to be definitely accurate, I would kind of guesstimate where the PC was and the PT and still maybe do an point as well, okay? If you look over here, I've got one called begin, and then along here, I've got some additional points that basically, you know, because they begin the curve, and this is the end curve, it automatically will figure out, and it, it splines up the curve, or the curve, up, basically. So it automatically does it for you. So again, just by defining the begin curve and end curve, it'll, it, and until you do that, it just says, hey, I'm still on a curve, still on a curve, and no matter how you do it, it automatically figures it out. So that, that's pretty neat functionality as well. Then we have this one over here, which is basically showing us, uh, this is that, 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 that uh, template uh, functionality I was talking about. So all I did here was I located the curve, and I've got a flange coming out over here, and the rest of this all here. Now this here, if I take this into the object viewer, which is a 3D viewer, you will see that this is actually doing automatically, and this is in 3D, it's automatically defining the sidewalk for me, as well as all the other figures, just from locating the bottom of curve. Okay. That's that's pretty pretty nice functionality. And if you look at the at the uh, survey database, you'll see here it creates these additional figures called TBC one, TBC two, TBC three, TBC four, and those are all generated from that one code location. That's really fantastic functionality. One of the other things to point out, this is unique to the survey database, is that when I click on the different figures, that's how they highlight in the drawing. This is actually kind of cool. I kind of, I kind of wish the, the, the proper attempt did that, but great functionality, the only one that does it, okay? Um, a little tip here to clear this, because sometimes people, when they close it, it kind of stays up. Hold the control, and that should, should clear it. <laughs> I'll clear here. There we go. Um, if we just click on something else, actually, if we click on something else, it'll actually get rid of it, okay? All right, this last one here, I'll show you just as another example here. So this point from 47 to 43 was not located. I have one here called close, and it, it's CLS, and it closes the figure automatically. So it'll close buildings. You don't have to like locate the last building over there. Okay. So that's basically just some of the additional line work functionality that you want to be able to, you know, kind of be aware of. Here. All right. So I want to go ahead and open up my um, other survey database here. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on webinar and click open for edit. Just as a little tip here, you cannot double click these. I and mean, you can, but if I double click it, it basically opens it up read only. So I will not be able to access the other functionality. So if I just right click on here, I can close it and then right click open for edit. Okay. And now what I want to do is I want to import that day one TXC file. I'll go ahead and import survey data. Going through the same process we kind of just did. All right. I'm going to go ahead and pick on a PNZB file format and I'll go ahead and grab on the day one. And of course it shows that it's a match number, northern, easting, elevation and description. And we'll go ahead and click next here. Like next, and for this here, we'll make sure that we go into the right order that we want. We'll do, in this case, we do, we do a point number, and we'll do the same thing with here as far as the figure prefix database, insert uh, objects, and insert survey points. Click finish, and you'll see automatically it brings the points in and it brings the line work in. And it's 
and that's it. So basically, just like this, it's programmatically created um, all my line work and all my points. Right now, again, this what well, yes, this 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 data set was definitely you know kind of canned if you want to call it that. But as long as you locate stuff in the field correctly and in the right order, this this is, this happens. There are companies doing this right now where this automatically happens. So it's, I'm not I'm not saying pine the sky stuff on. There are companies doing this. Okay. Will you have errors? Most definitely. And when you do have the errors, all you have to do is, you know, Simple 3D provides many ways to edit it. I can edit it here in the drawing. If I select this, I can actually edit this figure. You'll see here there's all kinds of edit functions. I can edit the geometry. I can edit the elevations. And then if I do it this way, it actually only updates the survey database. Okay. Basically, once I update the, the figure, I then update the survey database. So what I recommend you do instead, though, is just basically figure out because you know, you'll kind of have an idea where your survey is. You can go to the, the text file, find where your survey data is, and whether it's you just give it an additional, like a, a higher up number or something like that, you can do that as well. And basically, it'll, it'll, it'll kind of figure it out. It'll fix it there. And, and then, of course, you know, it'll actually, to, to update, place, you simply right click on this, and then, um, oops, sorry, right click on this, because it, this will basically reread the text file. It automatically brings it all in, updates all the data in the drawing, and you're good to go. Okay? So that's basically how you can kind of, you know, automate all that functionality. And again, like I said, you can interact with it. Now, I kind of, you know, navigate to it from the actual, um, uh, from in here. If I go ahead and click on figures, you know, I can actually right click on this and zoom to, right? So this is the interaction that you get from Simple 2, server, you, know, uh, you know, from the survey database to Simple 3D, all right? Um, and again, you can, you know, if let's say something updated or something changed, all you have to do is simply right click on here and you can um, update the points and then uh, update in here in the drawing. You can also, um, you know, basically, you know, bring the figure into uh, this as well. And you can modify stuff as well. Okay. So, Simple provides all that modification to it. I'm getting here a little bit low on time, so I want to make sure that I, I show you guys everything. All right. So, the next thing I want to show you guys is I want to show you how to kind of automate your points. All right. So if we look here, obviously we're not gonna we're not gonna plot these points. I do want to plot the tree. I want to plot the um, utility pole. I want to plot the uh, you know, maybe some additional points. But for the most part, I don't want to plot all of these points. All right. So how do you kind of automate that? So if you go to the prospector tab, all right. First off, if we go to the points, I want to show this to you. You'll see here this, this this icon right over here. That's a unique icon. It's kind of different. Basically, if I go into the drawing here and move this point. It will not allow me, as you can see here, I'm trying to drag this. It, you cannot drag that point because it's coming from the survey database. And again, that's the whole locking in for the actual survey. So they have a little bit you know, faith that the, the, the engineers can't modify these points. All right. The next thing I want to show you guys is that the, you can leverage things called point groups. Okay? Let me go ahead and just right click on here and say all of them. And point groups are a way to categorize or, or basically um, you know, put a bunch of points in a category and do something. Whether you want to see something specific um, or you want to control the display of them, which is what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on this and look properties. And I've created a point group that includes all of my points and it sets them to no display. Just to kind of look at that, if I double click here, I can edit them. And the first thing you'll notice here, if I go to the override tab, I can tell the style to be set to none and the label style to be set to none. As well, all right? That's what I've done. So I basically am overriding the description key and telling it to display nothing. All right. So I'll go ahead and click OK here and go ahead and put these to the top of the list here. So I'll just click over here, click OK, and you'll now notice that all my points just disappear like that. All right. Then what I'm going to do is, and of course you can basically automate this by already having the point group in here. But I'm going to go ahead and right click on this, and I'll go ahead and click on New, and I'll go ahead and create one here called plotting points, okay? And what I want to do is I want to include the points that I want to plot here. So I'll include the catch basin, my trees, and I'll just go ahead and just scroll down here just because I'm limited on time here. And I'll, I'll scroll down to the trees. And so there's my tree C, tree D, and there's my utility pole. And what I want to do is go to the overrides tab, and I'll just go ahead and um, actually, we'll just we'll just leave it like that. That way, the, the, the defaults will come in. But for the label style, I don't want the label style to come in. So I'm going to actually go here and set this to none. For the point style, though, I do want it to appear. And now, when I do that, you will see automatically 
those pointer and my drawing is rated. The reason that is is that it's saying, hey, I want these points to display, and they're being controlled by the description key, but I don't want their label style to appear. So this is what you would basically stand there, and they would be basically kind of done. Right? You have the points ready to, and that's it. Now, if you want to, you know, of course, they would be able to edit the display, but that's not a big deal. They're not, they're not going to be able to change the points and, and all that other stuff. Okay. So that's how you can kind of automate your, um, your, your point display. All right. All right. The next thing that I want to talk about here. Let me go ahead and put my all point here so we can see all my points. I click OK. We've got those all displayed. See how simple that is? That's the nice thing about the, the Civil 3 unit. All right, so now I'm ready to basically give the, sur the, give the engineer or create a surface um, for the, the drawing, okay, or for, for them to use for design, of course. So I already have in my drawing here a point group. Let's see what we have. Um, yep, we have this all set. So I have a point group already defined that basically will grab the points that I need to use for surface data. So I wouldn't include a hydrant in that. So you're not gonna see the hydrant in here. I wouldn't include um, a tree necessarily, so the tree is not in here. And I wouldn't include fence posts, right? We don't necessarily have those in the surface. So you only include in your drawing the different point codes or the different you know, uh, codes that you would want to include in the surface. I'll go ahead and click okay here. And I don't have to change the order of this. All I have to do, right, click on my surface to create surface, and we'll call this one EG. What style do I want to give? I already have a style for my default here, and we'll just go ahead and click OK. And we'll go ahead and expand that, and we'll expand definition. I'm going to go ahead and right-click on point groups and choose Add. I want to add in that point group that I already have in the drawing ready to create. Click OK. And as you can see, I basically have all those in there. Now I'm noticing that I forgot to add NG. Not a big deal. Go ahead and expand my point group. We'll go ahead and go to the properties of that point group. And like I said, <clears throat> we forgot NG. So I'm going to go to the end, comma, NG, comma, NG. It is case sensitive, so just in case I have some capitals in there. And we'll go ahead and just click the point list here just to verify that. It looks like we have them. Click OK. All right. That updates the point. Now, again, Civil 3D, its dynamic modeling system, is you'll notice here this is it's out of date. If I right click on this and we'll just click on rebuild automatic, you'll now notice my surface now includes all of those points. And of course, if we look here and we take this into the object viewer, you'll see that basically I've got a nice, I've got my actual terrain and everything, right? But I'm not done because, of course, you know, I need to actually have the break lines in there as well, okay? So, Here's where the open with the survey functionality comes into play. On the figures category, all you have to do is right click on the figures and click on create break line. Now here's the beauty of the system. Because in the prefix database, I've only turned on the ones that I want to actually be added to a surface, it automates that and says, hey, these are the only ones I'm gonna add because those are the ones, those are the only codes that have the ability or have the toggle on can you change them? Of course you can. You can change it on, you can turn them off, but if I don't want the barn in there, I can just toggle that off. So I can say no, but you can, you know, it just automates it auto, you know, by, by default. Once that's done, here's where you pick that surface. If you don't have a surface, you could have created one right over here. I'll go ahead and click OK. And now it's prompting you to add break. I can add some weeding factors or supplementing factors. I'm good to go. We'll click OK. And now, notice how the contours update automatically, and now I've got my surface in there and it's all updated, okay? And that's basically it. I'm ready to go, ready to hand this drawing off to, this, to the engineer. Uh, obviously, if I don't want them to have, if I don't want them to have the actual data and all they require from me, that's all I'm gonna give them a surface, I can, and, and, and topo, what I can basically do is I can right click on the EG and I can simply export Atlantic XML, give them that as my surface file. They should be fine with that. And then what I can do is get rid of all the additional points using the point group functionality and just export out those to just give them the points for whether it's for the uh, topo map as well as the line work, okay? That's all I would have to give them. And that's basically it, okay? Um, um, and so that's kind of the whole, that's an overview of the, the survey functionality um, within the Civil 3D. That was a mouthful. Are there any questions that need to be answered? Here online says, thank you so much for that presentation. I love this little question mark, little doll. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, <ha> <laughs> I love it. I don't have any 
comments in the chat. Let me see. I don't have any questions in the questions box. I had a gentleman uh, raising his hand, but it was by mistake. I thought he had a question. And I had another question that it was about licensing that I was able to answer. So it was okay, a great good. presentation. I guess there's no questions. You clarify everything they needed to know. Yep. Okay. So everybody, thank you so much for attending the webinar. As uh, Seth said and mentioned before during all his presentation, that was great. Uh, if at any time you need any help from us, he would be able to, he will be more than willing to help you in any um, customization of Civil 3D for surveying or any questions you might have about the process. Please feel free to contact us at 305-445-6480 or you can email us at infoddscat.com, or you contact any of us that you already have a relation with, Jaime, Rodolfo, or myself, or any of us. Again, thank you so much for joining us today, and you have a great day and weekend. Bye-bye. Take care, everybody.